Okay, hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the um, NXT report for the 3rd of uh, March, 2021. Um, I mean, I don't even know that it's fair to say that this is a show that I cared about. But again, I watched the AEW show first, and I really wonder... If there's anything they could have done that would have even been remotely competitive in my mind. Um, I, I don't know that that exists. I don't know that that there was anything they could have done that would have kept my attention to make them think it was a competitive program. There's nothing really offensive on the show. But at the same time, as is often the case with uh, NXT... There's, they do some good build to stuff, and they can have payoff shows, but much of the NXT shows are skippable and kind of flat. And so, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard, because how do you compete with a hot brand? I think you have issues. Um, that being said, uh, good match here, as Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch defeat Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher in a non-title tag team match. Uh, Lorcan pins Thatcher, and the champions obviously win. Burke and Thatcher to start the match off. Uh, good chain wrestling. I enjoy all four of these guys, so it's a fun deal. I'm familiar with Oni Lorcan from my independent days and, and actually called matches for uh, Tommaso Ciampa in his first few years of his career, which was an awesome experience. Um, each of the guys tag in. They square off. Everybody goes nuts, and the champions are spinning. Lots of uppercuts and other strikes from both teams. Uh, Lorcan's grounded by Thatcher. Uh, uses a fish hook to escape. I like them using more aggressive holds here. Thatcher's grip is not as great as he wants it to be. Uh, Thatcher's knee is the main target here. Thatcher... Uh, answers back with a belly to back suplex, but then there's an injury spot leads to a commercial break, or an injury tease more accurately. Thatcher takes clothesline and lands on his neck, rolls out of the ring while holding his neck. Um, he's moving his left hand to check if the feeling of his arm. Show cuts to a commercial. Thatcher's back in the match when the show returns. Uh, Ciampa in off a hot tag. He goes nuts. He mows down the heel champions with lariats. Ciampa fires up. Thatcher tags back in and goes after the heels. Champions uh, are having some trouble uh, with things as they're taking quite a massive beating and they manage to turn the tide eventually. Uh, all four guys go down selling before we go home. Imperium appears at the top of the stage, watching the match. Champions then spiked Thatcher with a DDT. Lorcan pins him. Apparently, um, on the independents, Thatcher was part of Imperium. This, I didn't know. Uh, the announcers acknowledge it, and I don't think the majority of the viewing audience knew either. Uh, Finn Balor and Roderick Strong go brawling with each other. After commercial break, Strong is out and he's in the ring. He is angry. Strong demands Adam Cole come out to the ring. Fal Balor comes out instead. Uh, Strong's angry with Balor. Strong blames Balor for the breakup of Undisputed Era and said they were fine until Balor got involved. Um, he said the group fell apart over the NXT Championship. Balor said he had a way to get Cole to show his face. Balor challenge, challenges Cole to a championship match next week on NXT. Yeah, because that means that NXT is scared of, to me, scared of the post-pay-per-view um, uh, deal as far as... I'm going to grab my phone. But scared of the post-AEW pay-per-view Dynamite rating. And again, it's not a shot at necessarily anything good or bad or indifferent. It's just... Um, you know, when you have a hot brand 
and you have a lukewarm brand at best. Not that there's anything wrong with NXT. Of the three brands, NXT is consistently the best brand in WWE and has been for the last several years, probably since it launched. But it's not comparative to AEW in terms of keeping storylines moving. Um, anyway, so Strong needs to become selfish and greedy, according to Balor. Uh, until you get the killer instinct, you won't get the championship back. Is basically his thing. You won't be the prince. Um, Balor is saying that when Strong decked him with the right hand, the brawl erupted, and then there's a pull apart there. The way goes to therapy. This is just goofy. Uh, skip with the way going to therapy. Um, they're all in the psychiatric center. Austin Theory remarks. Uh, that this doesn't look like Chuck E. Cheese. Johnny Gargano reassured him that this isn't Chuck E. Cheese. The group is uh, meeting with a clinical psychiatrist named uh, Linda Nicholas. Doctor said she normally sees people one-on-one. -on -one. Gargano says that's okay because Theory needed his family. They're for support. Uh, Dexter Loomis problem is hurting all of them. Theory said that he has no problem. Uh, Gargano said that that's the problem. Theory is kidnapped by Loomis, but Theory claimed he was on vacation. Theory said it was just two dudes hanging out, which is just weird. Uh, and it's just weird because why would Theory react so nonchalantly to being kidnapped? Anyway, Indy Hartwell is uh, doodling on her notebook. And she said she's missing the wrestling Loomis, and that's what she's doodling. Um, and then Gargano freaked out about this. He yelled about giving her the wrestling name. He tore up the notebook and said uh, she ruined Christmas. Doctor said it seems that Gargano has a lot of hostility towards Loomis, and it's exposing a, a deeply rooted issue within Gargano himself. Uh, Gargano makes a uh, therapy joke, ha ha ha, and then he gets out of his seat. He continues to scream at everyone. Doctor gets up uh, in his face and yells at him to get out of her office. She screamed, the office is now, uh, in I guess she's now the North American champion. She's having none of it and slams the door in his face. This continues later in the show, unfortunately. Cameron Grimes tries to buy his way out of a match um, with Bronson Reed. And Finn Balor and Roderick Strong is also acknowledged for later in the evening. Uh, Ember Moon with Shotzi Blackheart defeats Aaliyah with Robert Stonebrand. Moon pins Aaliyah in a short match. Moon looks strong, but it just feels like nothing really matters in this. Stone apparently has issues related to Blackheart. Kamea tries to interfere, but Blackheart makes the save with a dive on Kamea. And Stone, Moon delivers the Eclipse. Um, there is a good uh, women's championship hype match here with Io Shirai and Tony Storm uh, for next week. And then we see Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax defeat Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai to retain the titles. I think this is stupid. Kai and Gonzalez both have more value to the main roster and the NXT brand in general than either Baszler, who has been misused, or Jax, who has been miscast. Um, as a wrestler, that is. Anyway, uh, Baszler submits Kai to win the match. Challengers do have an out as she was not legal when this took place. Baszler and Kai uh, go at their history and uh, Kai has a bunch more fight than the last time they did this. Both teams square up and uh, that ends up going to a commercial break. Jax tags in. And uses her power against Kai, applies a stretched muffler, and um, sends 
kind of the middle turnbuckle. Um, then they go into some double teaming work. Gonzalez cleans house, gets the hot tag. She goes nuts and hit and continues to fight off Baszler. Uh, and then they get another near fall pretty quickly. Kai goes for the finisher, but works over uh, the, the, the fact her knee had been worked over, gives out on her. She buckles, and then Baszler uh, ca- continues to apply a Kukina clutch. Kai is able to tag Gonzalez despite being trapped in the hold, which kills the hold. Ref gets bumped and goes down. Gonzalez and Jax ball to the floor. Um, and then Baszler applies a rear naked choke again. Adam Pierce sends another ref out to the ring. He checks Kai's arm, which is limp. Uh, ref calls for the bell. And uh, the champs retain. Kai was not the legal woman in the match. The Adam Pierce thing is stupid because... He's part of other brands, not this one. Him coming into this brand just feels out of place. It feels like they booked themselves into a corner, didn't know where to go with the angle. Uh, therapy concision, con- session continues with Theory and Candice LeRae on the couch. Uh, Theory, um, he's not. He says he's not who he thinks he is. Hartwell still has a crush on him. Larray gets caught reading text from Gargano. Doctor kicks everyone out except Theory. Doctor tells Theory that this is a safe space. She asks what really happened with Loomis. And we go to another to be continued. Isaiah Swerve Scott is in the recording studio. He makes music. He cuts a promo on Leon Ruff. Um, I don't know. I didn't really care for this. I mean, Scott's a good promo, and he's better than I thought he was when I saw him on the Independents, but they've started and stopped with him so many times, it's not really worth it. Like, it would take him being off TV, returning with a completely new character to catch my attention. L.A. Knight comes to the ring for, the, for a promo, puts himself over, and mentions that um, TakeOver was his time. Uh, he says he's better than Tom Brady. He's a trendsetter, and uh, didn't, he didn't come here to do something fancy. He claimed that this is the la- he's the last of the dying breed. Don't call him the greatest of all time. Just call him L.A. Knight. Uh, this is really kind of flat and kind of, I don't know. Anyway, by this point, the show starts dragging for me because they do so many segments that don't have a long-term effect that I'm kind of getting bored. Cameron Grimes defeats Bronson Reed. Grimes um, pins Reed after interference by Knight. Um, match is fine for what it is. Grimes tries to buy Reed off. Reed punches him in the, in the face. And then um, Grimes' Grimes's money goes flying. Rains down in the ring. Reed squashes him like a bug. And show cuts to commercial. Grimes come is still um, kind of on the run coming back. Uh, Grimes does execute a one-man Spanish fly for near fall. Reed makes a comeback. Reed flies through the ropes. Wipes out Grimes with a dive. Grimes had to put his top hat on. And he's leaving. Reed uh, dived into him. L.A. Knight comes to ringside. Grimes... Uh, has the hat fall off, he's slid into the ring, distracts the ref, Knight then interfered and trips up Reed, Grimes follows up with a cave-in for the three count, uh, William Regal and Adam Pierce are arguing backstage, Caden Carter challenges Zia Lee to a match next week on NXT, Way goes to therapy, concludes here, um... Theory and Loomis. Theory says Loomis is a nice guy. Doctor told him Loomis only brought Theory back because he's tired of him. She said the truth is Loomis couldn't wait to get uh, rid of him. Loomis basically buried Theory to the doctor. Theory breaks down crying and ran out of the office into the waiting arms of Gargano. This is just 
Goofy, the way he leaves the office with Theory, Gargano stays behind to give the doctor peace of his mind. Uh, he pays her off. Gargano said that she earned every bit of the money, but he took back a $100 bill. Arcade money, he said. Gargano yelled at Theory that they were headed to Chuck E. Cheese. Everyone left her office. Dr. Nicholas concluded the segment with a remark, what a bunch of idiots, which, honestly, yes, the way these people are written, are written is rather idiotic. Uh, Legado de Fantasma, meh. Uh, Ever rises in the ring for a match. They're supposed to face Brizango. Uh, Fantasma comes out, attacks, uh, apparently attacking Brizango before the match. Could even begin. Brizango is, um, I'm pretending to be astronauts during their entrance, and they're attacked by Mendoza and Wild. Uh, Tyler Breeze is not wearing a helmet. Fandango is wearing a motorcycle helmet, and it never comes off. Uh, might not even been him. Who knows? Ever rise, fled the ring when Wild and Mendoza come into the ring. And Santin, San, uh, Santos Escobar comes out to ringside and cleans house on Ever Rise. He lays them both out. Segment just, uh, who cares? Why should anyone care? Anyway, next Wednesday, Caden Carter and um, Zaya Lee, uh, NXT Women's Championship, Io Shirai and Tony Storm. NXT Championship, Finn Balor, Adam Cole. And Regal says he has an announcement next week that will change the landscape of NXT. Wonder what that could be. Probably they're moving to Tuesdays. Um, Balor pinned strong to win the match. Match was really good. Uh, awesome grappling at the start. And they fight through a commercial break. Uh, Balor goes after the arm. Strong comes back to work on the back and spine of Balor. Backbreakers for a near fall for a series of near falls. Balor fights back with a series of Irish whips. Uh, Strong uh, manages to hit a lariat, rallies into some major signature spots, and gets n a bunch of near falls on Balor again. Balor hits Strong with a sling blade. Strong catches him with the Boston Crab. Strong. Um, Goes for the falling backbreaker, but this is countered into a foot stomp by Balor. Balor then hits a, a shotgun drop kick and follows up with the coup de gras. And Balor then delivers the 1916. Covers strong for the pinfall. Adam Cole appears on stage after the match and has a stare down with Balor. These stare downs and teases have just really gotten so predictable, it's annoying. Anyway, that is that. We will be back with more of the uh, Smoky Mountain run here in the next little while. Uh, until next time, we've got over 1,100 options for you. Keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment.